Hello and welcome back once again to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Ooh, things are really hotting up. Christmas is coming and the football is coming thick and fast, like gasoline and a fire running wild. If you can name that tune, I will actually physically buy you a beer because it's pretty obscure. We've got Championship, Premier League, Syria and Eredivisie action, as well as some club, as well as some World Club Cup competition as well. And we might even get an appearance from the Christmas Grinch towards the end of the show. Joining me in studio is Pro Tipster Dan. We have Pro Tipster Martin and Pro Tipster Johnny on the line. And, uh, yeah, lads, I hope we're all right. Dan, how are you? Um, not too chuffed about being called the Christmas Grinch. But no, yeah, it's I'm not fine. you. <laughs> it's definitely not you. It's definitely not you. You're hairier. <laughs> yeah, I am Grinch. Uh, Johnny, how's it going? Um, I'm very well. I'm very well. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Martin, what about you? Yeah, yeah, I'm alright. I have a bit of a social media nightmare today, but apart from that, I'm alright. Oh, uh, you're in Twitter jail, aren't you? Yeah, it's put a job today, unfortunately. Someone, and it's someone is, is, is not being nice to, pro, to the pro tipster family. No. No. <laughs> We're gonna find you. <laughs> Give a Karigi. That's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> oh god, there's a blast from the past. Um, right lads, look, uh, before we start, these podcasts are available on iTunes, Android Podcatchers, YouTube, and the pro tipster blog site as well. If you'd like to get in touch with us, with some betting questions, some general advice, or some even, or some kinky photos, hit us up on Twitter, uh, you can get me Pro Tips for IRL, the lads will give out their handles later on in the show, or you can get us on Facebook at Pro Tipster UK. Let's get straight into the football, we have loads of matches to talk about. Uh, on Friday night, we have 15th place Sheffield Wednesday taking on first place Wolves in the Championship. Uh, Dan, would you like to take this one first? Um, yeah, it's a pressure game for Sheffield Wednesday manager Carlos Carvajal. He's basically been told he's got one game to save his job. Mm-hmm. Um, Sheff- I mean, the Wednesday, uh, they've only lost once in the last five games, but, um, you know, they've drawn four. They've not won any. And it's just not good enough. He, I, I was talking to Paddy before the show, and it's a discussion with the squad, and he's just chock full of forwards, and they're not doing it. And they face the Wolves side that are like a, like a freight train at the moment. Um, so I, I fear for Carver Hal. Um, he's a fiery character. He's got fight. He's, you know, they, they've had issues within the squad in the past of people arguing, and I think, I think this is it. This is his doom. Um, unfortunately for him. Um, tight, tight, time and tight, chem, wait for no man. Martin, did you see that in this one? Um, I actually think, I couldn't believe Wolves were above evens, to be honest. Um, yeah, just going what Dan said, Carver Howe will probably lose his job because Wolves will probably win this one. It's just one of those, they got, three four wins, they got back to back playoffs, uh, like the last couple of seasons in a row. I think their fans expected it to go the same way this season, but, you know, they're, they're kind of, they're not going to go down, but they're 10 points off the playoffs already. So, you know, they're, they're having a bit of a nothing season. And yeah, like, like Dan said as well, Wolves are absolutely flying. Um, they're actually, Create history if they if they win and keep a clean sheet. They've never won four in a row away from home and kept a clean sheet in their history. So that'll be a first if that happens. And I can see it happening. Um, and Wolves at two point zero nine, I think, it's a cracking price. Yeah, I think it's. Yeah, yeah, I was saying the same to, to Dan earlier. I couldn't believe that they were priced over evens, but I thought I'd, I'd look at the head to head stuff, and they've only won one of the last five there. So maybe that has something to do with the price. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I don't know. Is there maybe? I think the fact that, um, Carpahal got dismissed, uh, against Hull at the start of the month, and I, I don't think he's even in the, in the dugout for this one. I think they'll be in the stands, so that, that won't help Shiff on Wednesday either. In the stands, oh, yeah. Humiliating. Johnny, do you have any opinion on this? Uh, I'll leave the expertise to the, to the guys. However, uh, looking at the, looking at the odds and, and the market, um, and, uh, I'm very, very tempted by the minus 0.25 handicap on, on the Wolves. Right then, we'll move on from the Championship then and we'll go to the Premier League. Third place, Chelsea are taking on uh, 11th placed Southampton. Chelsea looked pretty good against Huddersfield the other night. Southampton, <laughs> however, looked fairly atrocious against their former manager. Johnny, we'll start with you on this one. Okay, so first Saturday again, Chelsea Southampton. Um, looking at the, the market and looking at the odds and seeing Chelsea uh, played pretty well against um, Huddersfield in midweek. Um, obviously, the, the big question is uh, 
is Morata going to play or not? Uh, however, Chelsea shown that they can cope even with without Morata. Uh, I haven't seen the Southampton uh, Leicester Leicester game uh, yesterday. Uh, however, from what I read and from from the previous uh, performances of Southampton. They are capable of scoring goals, but they concede quite too much, which can be dangerous against a, a side like, like Chelsea uh, away from home. Uh, looking at the market, uh, my, my choice for this one is both teams to score. No at 1.70, as I expect Chelsea to win this game, uh, especially after they drop points uh, against uh, Martins West, West Ham. Hey. <laughs> ah, you always get a mention. Uh, <laughs> uh, they need to they need to collect points to stay in, 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 in to collect as many points during Christmas as possible. So they will they should win this game, and I'm not expecting Southampton to score against a side like Chelsea. Although I do uh, admit this might be a in a way a risky risky choice. So both teams to score no 1.7. Yeah, I was watching the, the, the Chelsea Huddersfield one and um, Thibaut Courtois was furious when they let him go, so he must be on some sort of decent uh, <laughs> He's got to be, because he was fuming. It was like he lost the match or something. It was just, just one goal, man. You're training it up. It's fine. No, but uh, yeah, I reckon he lost some money or something. Uh, Dan? <laughs> um, I think I think I, I'm going to punch Trent St. Hampson. Uh, I was showing you the uh, the goals from Southampton versus Leicester, and the uh, that Mara's first goal was just everything that's wrong with Southampton at the moment. Southampton lost the ball pretty much on the edge of the Leicester box. Um, mm. Leicester broke through originally through DD. Ball came up to Mara's, and Mara's falls over, gets up, carries on dribbling, and there's no challenge. There's no challenge from the Southampton defence, and they give him all the space he wants, <laughs> and he scores. You play like that against Chelsea, you are kind of get ripped apart. And yeah. if, if you look, uh, I, I watched most of um, the Southampton Leicester game. Southampton's defending was atrocious. Um, they, they, they were too often, they were backing off, they were not making challenges. The third goal, Andy King, um, <coughs> came from a free, uh, there was a free kick from Mares pinged into the area and it pinballed around a little bit. But when it was flashed across the box, King is like, it is six yards out, completely open. And I, I'm looking at this thinking, where's the defence? Who's picking him up? Um, actually, a stat for you. Andy King has now scored in his 11, last 11 consecutive seasons for Leicester. It's wow. A bit of a stat, if you ask me. It was also, uh, that game was also the first occasion two Japanese players have scored against each other in the Premier League. Oh, that's some lovely stat. Yeah, but um, I... I I looked at this one and I've gone for Chelsea minus one and a half, two point oh three, because although Chelsea may be without Morata, I don't think it matters. Um, when you've got players like Eden Hazard on form, you know mm-hmm. um, their, their midfield is looking back up to full strength. Southampton playing like that, they will get torn in one. I like the way William comes in. I think William is kind of—he looks like he's kind of happy enough to play a bit part role. He comes in, he does his job, with a smile on his face, scores the odd goal every now and again, and. Then he go back and sit on the bench when he's not needed, and he's happy with that. It's it's good that Conte has has that uh, has that kind of relationship with him. He's not <laughs> sulking about being on the bench. Mark, what have you gone for? I've gone for exactly the same as Dan. Uh, Chelsea minus one point five on the Asian handicap at two point zero three. Uh, exactly the same reasons as Dan. Really, um, I just just looking at Southampton against Leicester. They were they have a terrible. I think Fraser Forster actually made a couple of decent saves. Otherwise, it could have been more. Um, no Morata potentially he still remains a doubt and I think they'll they'll do very well with him anyway um, they've got the likes of Zappacosta and Fabregas potentially to come in that you know that they can, they can afford to rotate the squad Hazard didn't play the full 90 he, he come off a little bit early on so it, he should still be pretty fresh and yeah I I just can't see Southampton doing anything at all, and especially at Stamford Bridge, where Chelsea playing so well. Everything looks so great against Huddersfield. The way you know they're passing, the movement, they covered so much ground. Like no one was stood still. They're all running around for each other, creating space. If they do that against Southampton, yeah, they're, they're, they'll score three or four. Yeah, they were brilliant. Uh, Watching it as well, the same as you. And it, 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 it's it's an awful pity from a. Okay, yeah, but can you really be neutral when Chelsea are involved, though, I suppose? But it, it's an awful period that Morata lost 
uh, informed with him and that as well. They don't. They didn't have. They don't have someone who's good enough to to take his role. Mm. I. I I, th- I think Dan disagrees with me. He thinks Man United are the best of the rest. I, I would think Chelsea would be the be- best of, of, of the rest. But uh, just from a neutral point of view, to, to give City more of a push, I would like uh, Chelsea to have been in a bit better or a bit higher than where they are now. You know, but that's that's football. You know, Man City, please stop being so good because you're ruining my life. <laughs> oh, Premier League! Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to ProTipster.com for more details. Uh, let's move on to um, the game of the weekend. And so first place Man City are taking on uh, fourth place Spurs. Uh, I found one thing here. So Spurs have won. Uh, <laughs> Spurs have conceded first in seven out of eight away games. Um... I thought there was something in that. Uh, who do you want to start with here, Martin? Oh, actually, I'll tell you what I've gone for. I've gone for Spurs plus one at 1.97. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, a little bit risky, but um, the reason I've gone for that is that, yeah, City have won 15 in a row, but when they come up against Spurs, Spurs just seem to... I think it's just the way they play. Man City find it very hard to break them down, and, and you know, they've lost three and drawn one of the last four against Spurs, and... Spurs have actually, apart from Chelsea, who have won seven, Spurs have won more away games at the Etihad than anyone else. Um, they seem to like going there, and I, I expect there to be goals. Um, I, I think it might well be a two-all draw. But, yeah, I've, I think Spurs have sort of got got enough, especially with Deli Alley being fresh. He didn't play much in midweek, and... Ultimate, uh, to, be, to be fair, Ultimate has been amazing this season, and if he if he keeps Harry Kane quiet, then you know it could be a different story. But um, apart from Ultimate, I think Harry Kane could have a very very good day at the weekend. Um, so yeah, I think I think Spurs have got a great chance. What about what, what about Eric Dyer going up against Sergio Aguero though, or Gabriel Jesus? Wow, oh, yeah, it's a good, yeah, it's a good point. Um, is that, is Sanchez back? I, I couldn't remember whether he's still banned for a game or whether he's back. Um, well, I presume he, he must be back. How long was he out for? He definitely missed one. He's missed, yeah. He's missed two. Missed two. Has he missed two? Oh, okay. But I, I think Dyer, Dyer's, Dyer's solid at the back. Don't, you know, City are going to get chances, but, you know, they got Hugo Lloris in goal. He's, he's a pretty decent goalkeeper and, uh, I just think, I don't know, I don't know, it's something about this game, I just don't think Man City are going to have it all their own way. And, you know, we, West Ham, we went there and, and caused some problems, and if we can do that, Spurs can certainly do that. There's got to be a time where where someone just turns up and, and, and you know, they get something out of the game against City. They can't carry on like this. Yeah, but should, we all thought that when, when Spurs went to, went to uh, not Ivory, went to the Emirates, didn't we? And they crumbled. <laughs> So we'll see. Johnny, did you see Atten in this match of interest? Um, yeah, definitely the game of the week for us. Um, yeah, the big question is who's going to stop City? Uh, I've gone for a similar prediction than that, that Martin did. I went for Spurs plus 1.25 Asian handicap and the odds for this one is 1.76. Uh, obviously, Spurs started very well the Premier League season. They, I think, they won the first four away matches. Then they, they seem to be struggling, struggling lately with the uh, playing away from home. But uh, as Martin said, uh, the, there must be someone at, at one point that will either stop City or make them their life much more difficult than up till now. Uh, and exactly, if West Ham did go make trouble for City, why, why not Spurs? I, I think that they would, they would be. They are capable of doing it. Uh, Man City are obviously flying high after the, I think that after the Champions League draw, they are even uh, feeling more confident after getting Basel in the round of 16. Mm. Uh, however, I, 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 w- I would have expected goals in this, in this game as well. But looking at the market and the way it's priced, uh, there's no, absolutely no value for me to go for goals. So, because as we know that when top teams are playing against each other, it doesn't always mean goals, even if they are offensively minded and as they try to cancel each other out. Uh, and it very much depends on the, on when the first goal will be scored in this, in, in this game. Because, uh, I think 
I will be very curious to see how Spurs will approach the game, if they will play their usual style or they will uh, adapt uh, more their game plan uh, considering they are playing against uh, Pep Guardiola's side. Um, anyway, to cut, to make it a bit shorter, uh, yeah, Spurs plus 1.25, 1.76. That's not bad. I guess, I guess for, for anyone that that's not, I'm not sure about Asian handicaps who's listening, 1.25 means that you, Johnny, will half, if, if they lose by one, you'll still get your half, half win there. Whereas if exactly. you, my, my plus one, I'll just get my stake refunded. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dan, what have you gone for here? I've not gone for anything yet. Um, because, um, I just want to know a little bit more about what teams are going to line up. Mm. Um, I, I made a couple of notes about players. Like, we did the combined 11 on Wednesday, uh, me, Paddy, and Martin. And, um, two players who kind of got a little bit bad managed, both had good games. So, Edison, um, who Paddy was insisting on. My man! <laughs> I like, instead of Lloris. I thought Edison had a great game. Um, he made a couple of really good saves. Uh, but, it's the whole sweeper-keeper thing he's got going on as well, which is what, why um, uh, Pep's brought him in. There was, there was a, a little clip of a pass he made, like, bought, took the ball, and you know how he keeps kicked out of his hands? Well, he's done yeah. that, he's just pinged it to the halfway line to a player, like, to feet. <laughs> and that's just like, that's nice. You know, he, I can see what, what, what Pep's going for here. He's a far superior keeper to Claudio Bravo as well. Um, the other one was Serge Aurier, uh, the right-back. We were talking about right backs. We talked about Trippier. We talked about um, Carl Walker. But Aurier mm. had a good game last night. I, his goal. I didn't see it. It's fluky when it was sort of goal. Did not mean that goal. He did not mean that goal. But no way. I'm a big fan. I'm a big believer. You got to buy a ticket to win the raffle. And you know, you, you pick up the ball. You make a little bit of space. You try and put a ball in. If it flies in the back of the net, well, you know that's so much the better. But. He actually showed that, you know, he maybe was worth the money they paid for him. I also thought Son as well. I've been more and more impressed by um, the sad Korean lad Son. And I mm. think that he's an important player for Man- uh, for Spurs. If they're not to rely on um, on Harry Kane. I'm going to wait though, um, because it's about defenders for me. So I'm guessing that Man City are going to go Man- Mangala after Mendy. But I want to see if they, I-, I-, I do want to see if company could make it back. Um, if um, Pep would risk it, likewise with um, like, would you would you risk would you risk company against Harry Kane? Yeah, but would I would I risk Mangala against Harry Kane? <laughs> that may be a tough question. Yeah. Uh, likewise, fifty percent company is better than one hundred percent Mangala. <laughs> you no, know, and likewise, you know, for for Spurs, are they going to play with Dyer and Vertonghen? I think yeah. Sanchez is still, uh, I think Sanchez had a three match suspension. I think he's only been, uh, suspended for two of them so far, but, um, I'm just going off the top, top of my head, so if I'm wrong, please don't shoot yeah. me. <laughs> um, it, it, even the wing backs, I mean, Trippier or Davis or Rose, Aurier. Yeah, the, 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 there's a few, and, and also the midfield as well, the Spurs midfield. Would, uh, um, cause I think Den Bailey will come back in, and I think Den Bailey's a very important part of that midfield. Mm. He's very underrated. So I just want to see, uh, I, w- I want to see the press conferences. I want to see what the managers say about players coming back before I, I, I go with something. Um, because I think the line is going to be really important in this game. Fair enough. Yeah, look, look I can't wait for it anyway. I'm probably not going to put any money on it myself. I'll probably just have a couple of pints. <laughs> I, I think, I think, I think a couple of pints is, uh, yeah. is too big, uh, <laughs> Uh, let's move. So I suppose everyone by now will know this stat that Pep holds the record for the longest winning streak in three of the top five leagues. So Bayern Munich, Barcelona, and now with Man City, that's just it's ridiculous. And yeah, I, I, I'm like you, Dan. I was never a huge fan of Pep. I, I always knew he was good, but I just think that's fanning about football. You know, I'm, I'm a bit yeah. blood of blood and thunder kind of get it forward. Yeah, get it forward. You know, I'm old school. You know, hoof, hoof, hoof the ball. No, not really, but you know, this is why I kind of like the, the championship and that kind of level of football because it's just blood and guts. Whereas just fanning about and so oh, I'm way better than you. No, I'm better. Than, no, you have the ball. No, you have the ball. No, please, you have the ball. It's like, come on, just fucking score a goal. A little like that Simpson sketch with like half pack past the wing back. <laughs> and then, soccer, <laughs> low scores and ties. Exactly. It's it's beautiful to watch those in neutral. Although um, Zlatan's come out and called Pepe mature, isn't it? 
Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen that. That's from the book. I mean, have any of you read Zlatan's book? It's absolutely hilarious. I haven't yet, no. It's so funny. It's one of the funniest football... It's, it's definitely the funniest football book I've ever read. It's ridiculous. And uh, the, the, the guy who wrote it came out a couple of years ago and he says, yeah, well, look, to be honest, I, I made up about 75% of it. But it's not that I'm not <laughs> <laughs> As you probably know, podcasts still grow by word of mouth. Show your support for the Pro Tipster Football Show by telling your football mad friends all about our podcast or by leaving a nice review for us on iTunes. Let's move on because we're, we're against the clock here. Um, Stoke versus uh, West Ham. Since you're the resident Hammer, Hammers uh, fan, Martin, we'll start off with you. Yeah, just run through this one quickly. Um West Ham plus zero, Asian handicaps, draw no better, 2.40. This, for me, could be the game where Mark Hughes um, gets his P45. I think Stoke are in terrible run of form. We're definitely playing Stoke at the right time. We're in good form. We can go there and get a win. Mark Ivanovic, this is the one game that he's been looking forward to. Um, he's probably going to be so pumped up he ends up getting sent off. I really hope that doesn't happen. Um, <laughs> do you, do you, do you it wouldn't survive. Huh? They, someone called him the Juggernaut of it. Juggernaut of it. Brilliant. But no, um, five out of the last six have been draws though, so for maybe if you're looking to bet on this, then it might be worth signing with the draw potentially. Um, yeah, Stoke have only, only won once in the last seven. That was against Swansea. Um, so yeah, I, I certainly think, you know, our current form, we can go there and get a win. Yeah, the odds, the odds on Stoke winning are ridiculously low. They're two points. Yeah, they're too short. And yeah. 3.32 for the draw, 3.42 for West Ham. Johnny, what have you got for on this? Um, very, I, I, I agree with Martin. Uh, this is, this, this game for me has a draw written all over it. However, I think if, if, if I would have to give an edge to, to one of the teams, it would be West Ham. So I've picked West Ham plus 0.25, Asian handicap, and the odds on products are 1.93. Um, so that means that if, if there is a draw, uh, the, the prediction is half one, which makes it a bit more interesting. Uh, obviously both, I think I read both teams will miss some of their, uh, defenders with Stoke in horrible form, even though it's, it's, it's a team I like, mo- I like most from, from the England Premiership. I don't. Uh, I see them struggling against West Ham, and exactly this is a great, great time to to come just to play Stoke for West Ham, and this is their chance to get some valuable points to the, to the standings for for them. Magic. All right, done. You pick that. Um, as you know, I'm allergic to bat, uh, betting on West Ham at the moment. That's <laughs> having been burned <laughs> so many times, but I'm so tempted by West Ham. And like over three in this game, I'm so tempted. Um, I think Hughes is next to go. Um, I've written Hughes next to go in my little notebook here. He has. They can verify that. Um, and I've also written <laughs> Moyes turned a corner question mark because I genuinely think that West Ham have turned a corner under David Moyes. I, I don't know what. Not quite sure what he's done, but the performances against Arsenal, against Chelsea, um, th- th- there's clearly something going right for West Ham now. Mm. And as Mike said, that this is the best time to face Stoke. I mean, um, all, all I can think is that Mark Hughes is probably glad he's driving to the game and not getting the train. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, he's get, I, if I was a Hammers fan, I'd be seeing you again sacked in the morning because I think that's what's going to happen. Um, before we leave this match, uh, uh, why, please, someone tell me, why does David Moyes want to, sh- want to sign uh, Jack Wilshere? Um, why? I, I could tell you, but uh, we get done for libel, so... Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it'd be great. Uh, I, I think yeah. it'd be great in the park for us. Yeah, he's a West Ham fan. You know, he'll he'll come home. Um, that why he was so bad last night? I thought he had a half-decent game, to be honest, but from what I see. <laughs> yeah, but I'm worried about signing him and him being injured for, like, 50% of the time. Ever. <laughs> nah, we got, we've got Gary Lewin now as a physio. No, nobody gets injured for that long. At West Ham anymore, apart from Andy Carroll. Okay. Okay. okay, is he doing one of these like Tour de France, these bloods? <laughs> but, um, you know, Wilshire has just come back into the side of Arsenal, so who, 
you know, who better against him getting a new Arsenal contract if he carries on? All right, let's move on because we're, we're going to get turfed out of his room soon. Uh, Johnny, you wanted to tell us a bit about the Rotterdam uh, Derby. Oh, yes. Uh, so there is a big Rotterdam Derby on uh, yeah. Sunday at 12.30 Central Europe time. So it's part of Rotterdam against the Feyenoord Rotterdam. So Feyenoord are, are the, the the winners of the league from, from, from last season. Uh, currently sixth in the standings against Sparta Rotterdam, who are 17th. That's the last but one spot in, in, in the standings. Uh, obviously, it, it's, it's a, it's a big, der- it's a big derby. Sparta Rotterdam used to be the, the club for the upper class. Feyenoord uh, used to be the, the club for the working class. Uh, just to give a bit of background. Uh, first, there, there, there hasn't been a derby for a long time because Sparta were relegated in 2009, 2010. And then returned back, uh, I think it was in 2016, when they were back to RDFC. Uh, the history and the, how, how both teams play suggest goals. Uh, I've, I've made a calculations that there were, uh, uh, I think 3.38, uh, goals per game in, in their, in their head-to-head matches. It's, uh, taking into consideration wow. 100, 108 matches, um, uh, between the sides. Uh, Sparta scored, Sparta Rotterdam scored uh, 120, uh, Feyenoord scored 246. So, uh, it's very, it's very, very clear for me to go for goals. The, the odds are not super great, obviously, but, uh, I would expect Feyenoord to win. Uh, it's a game they have to win if they want to climb up the standings. Mm. Uh, and last season, However, last season, Feyenoord won at home 6-1, but lost away 1-0 uh, in, uh, in, against Sparta. But anyway, uh, for for this game, over 2.5 goals at 1.64. That should be a pretty safe safe, safe prediction. We know that the Eredivisie is quite known for plenty of goals. Mm. Uh, so this should come. Uh, for the Bray ones, I would even try uh, over 3.5, but uh, yeah. Yeah, for this safe option here. I noticed um, both teams to score was 1.87. I thought that was pretty decent. Yeah, might might be worth a shot as well. But I saw that Spa are actually playing tonight, so they've actually got a, got a game tonight. So they've got yeah. a, 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 a one day less to prepare for the game. So yeah, that might be effective. Yes. All right, we're uh, we'll run through a couple of matches uh, in the So West Brom are taking on Man United on Sunday. So sorry, Dan. I was going to talk about West Brom. Okay, go for it. Okay. West Brom. So, um, West, here's a stat for you. West Brom have, have gone 50 games without a penalty. Uh, wow. the last penalty scored in September 2016 against West Ham. It was duly converted by Nasser Chadley. It's one of the longest, um, yeah, it's a long, long streak without penalty. Um, I'm intrigued by this one because, um, on the one hand, uh, West Brom fans I know on Twitter last night were talking about how the players are on queue list in that they're actually starting to attack again. But um reading the forums today that like the West Brom fans are like saying that oh, you know, resigning to relegation, can't score, can't do this, can't do that. And yeah. then you look at the Man United fans, you know, they they won against Bournemouth and I, I was showing Paddy like uh, the Man United forum and they're all moaning. Morning. They're all moaning about it being a crap game and about them not playing really well. So like, what what do you want? <laughs> um I've always thought it's the mark of a great team when you can win when you're playing like crap. And yeah. Man United are playing brilliantly, but they are still grinding out the wins. Um, I've not, I've not put anything on this yet because it's a little bit early, um, with it being a Sunday game. But I'm intrigued by, um, where it's going to be with the goals because I think it'll be under two and a half goals. I don't think there'll be much in it. Mm. And, um, under 1.78 or so. Yeah. Wow. That's a little bit skinny, but, um, I'll probably, that's what I'll be going for. Um, also, if both teams to score, no. If anything above 1.7, I'll be thinking about that. Cause I don't think West Brom will score. Um, it's it's going to be an interesting one to see if Lukaku scores against his former team. You know, he got one against Bournemouth. I think he's hitting the goal trail again. This is the kind of game that Man U brought him in for. So, True. interesting one. Mm. I do want to understand, uh, Martin. Um, not yet. Same as Dan. Not yet. Um, 
But yeah, with Lukaku, he scored 30 and 38 against teams outside the big six. So, you know, I think he'll relish this game against his old club and probably will score. Um, will West Brom score? I don't know. Probably not. So I'll probably take a look at the Asian handicap a little bit closer to the time. I just think West Brom are West Brom are resigned to relegation. They've got to sort themselves out. Yes, they've got Alan Pardew in now, but nothing's changing. No wins in the last 16 games in all competitions. And a one in their last 15 Premier League games either. So, and I can't see them doing anything here. So, although I've not placed anything yet, I'll probably look at uh, United on the Asian Handicap. If you have any betting questions you'd like to ask, don't be shy. Get in touch with Patty, Martin, or Dan on Twitter. Pro Tipster IRL. ProTipster E-N or ProTipster D-A-N or on Facebook at ProTipster UK. Right. Uh, Johnny, you wanted to tell us about the World Club Cup. Oh, yes. So we have the FIFA World Club Cup um, coming up on Saturday and it's the final Gremio against Real Madrid. Real Madrid uh, yesterday eliminated uh, the host. Just. Host. Just eliminated, yeah. It was a close one. Um, two one against Al Jazeera. Um, yeah, uh, Ronaldo and Bale, Bale scored. Uh, uh, actually Bale scored three goals in his three matches played in the World Club Cup. There's been three matches? Uh, yeah. Three matches in his life because Bram did have won twice in the last couple of years. Oh, sorry. To be honest, I didn't even know this was going on until you told me about it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I'm a massive football fan. I'll watch anything, you know. Didn't even know this was going on. I did think it's, it's such a weird competition. Like, if they marketed it, marketed the, this properly, it could be massive. But it's kind of like, it's like, yeah. uh, it's like I think Charity Shield or something. It's like, eh. Problem is that there's no really time for it in the, in the, in the, in the football calendar because, I mean, placing it in the, Middle of the season doesn't really help, uh, I yeah. think. But then finding finding a, a consensus with with all the other confederations is quite difficult. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, Real Madrid won won this competition last year. They beat uh, Kashima Antlers four two after after extra time. They won it in two thousand and fourteen again. Well, however, looking into their matches at this competition, uh, so in two thousand and sixteen, two thousand and fourteen, and the match yesterday. Uh, they only once won once uh, with by more than two two goals, and that was four nil in 2014 against Cruz Azul. That's a Mexican side. Yeah. And looking at the the market and the lines that were set, I really fancy Gremio plus two point twenty five on Asian handicap. That's that's a real that's a real value to me. What odds is that? What odds is that? Uh, one second. Uh, I have Written down the line, I haven't read the odds, but uh, I think that's uh, oh, it's one point eight three. That's not bad. Uh, that, that's interesting because um, Fel- uh, Felipe, who uh, looks after our Portuguese uh, arm of a pro is saying that the, the Club World Cup is actually a big deal in Brazil. It's a really big deal, and the, the Brazilian teams really want to win it. Grêmio, obviously, being of Brazil, mm. whose season has actually just ended, so this is like their their closed season they're playing in. Yeah, uh, Grêmio, I think, uh, didn't, uh, had to beat Pachuca of Mexico in extra time in their semi, but I can't. I don't think I, I can't imagine Real Madrid are actually that bothered. I mean, I looked at the team; it's a full strength team. Um, like Casemiro was back, uh, Varane was back. Obviously, uh, Ronaldo, Bale came off of Benzema. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and I was definitely looking at Gremio in the Asian uh, in the Asian handicap because I think Gremio wants it more. Um, it's really prestigious to the Brazilian sides. Uh, and Felipe uh, was actually this was before the Pachuca game, uh, before the semis, was saying to back Gremio to win it at sevens. Wow. Uh, um, you know, this this is what he was talking about, and I, I'm really intrigued by it. But I'm, yeah. I, I'm like Paddy. I'm, I know quite a bit about the Club World Cup, and I'm not interested. <laughs> you know, um, I know that I knew the show was being held in the United Arab Emirates. I know it's been held in Japan a lot. It's kind of alternating between the UAE and Japan of late. Um, I know that 
for instance, Auckland City, who are the OFC representatives, I think it's their fifth consecutive time, because they've won the OFC Champions League so many times. Um, I don't know, it's a ridiculous tournament, and it, it could be better, but it's, there's just no space for it on the calendar, you know, and Teams, it, it's it's not only the space in the calendar; it's the distance that needs to be travelled, and it's That's true. and it's all about you know ma- making it for for the it's, it's Europe versus South America because originally it used to be the Inter- Intercontinental Cup and it used to be the um the European Champions Cup winners against the Copa Libertadores winners. Now, like they brought in the AFC Champions League winners, the African Champions League, the OFC, CONCACAF, and also the host Nations League champions comes into it too. So they've got, yeah, right. so you've got like a, a fair, few, fair few games now. And I'm still not interested. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, the Christmas Grinch lads. I have to talk about this. I'm not impressed with Sam Allardyce at all. Cancelling Everton's Christmas party. Everton have had decent results lately. What, what's he doing? I might, yeah, he might be back on now. Who knows? He, he, might said, he said he might get up to them in January if the results pick up. And to be fair, I think he'd better like, put his hand in his pocket. I was reading that, you know, um, since he's taken charge, uh, like the defence has like, shored up. They're not conceding goals. Rooney's scoring for fun. I think he's got five. And you've now got this Rooney Sigurdsson partnership that's developing. Yeah. Sam's worked his magic, <laughs> worked his magic, and uh, but I can't imagine that while his players you know are hard uh, training, you know, surely he's going to be in Marbella with a pint of wine. <laughs> he's got to be. Uh, he's got to be. <laughs> right, look, one more match, and we really have to flow through this one. Then uh, Leon, second place, are taking on fourth place Marseille in Ligue 1. Uh Johnny, do you see up here? So yeah, in France it's, it's a big game. It's a so-called Olympico, like related, relating to to the El Clasico. Um, I for for this one, I think it has written goals all over it. But I like to go against the market a lot of times. So because it's a match of two top sides, uh, and both both it's it's quite yeah. Uh, both of them are top French, top French teams. Uh, I've gone for under 2.5 goals just because the odds are ridiculous. It's 2.38 for under 2.5 goals and, and known French football when the big teams, uh, play each other. It's, a, it's very often, uh, not, not, not a very interesting game. <laughs> Uh, just quickly, uh, we say it's not interesting, Johnny. I, I did have a look at one of their draws in 09-10, ended 5 all. Um, so that'd be interesting. But yeah, um, just quickly, I've gone for a draw of 3.75. Nine of the last 14 have been draws between two sides. Marseille have only won uh, one away defeat in the league. Leon only one home defeat in the league. And Leon only drawn two in the last 15 games. So they're due a draw. So I'm going for a draw. Okay, good. Well, Dan. Marseille plus a half, one point eight oh. Marseille, uh, both both teams lost in the cup in midweek. Marseille went mm-hmm. down four one to Montpellier away. Um, sorry, Leon went down four one to Montpellier away. Marseille lost on penalties to Ren. Leon have um only won two in five in the last five at home. Um, <coughs> Marseille, as Martin said, unbeaten eleven. Uh, unbeaten seven away. I'm just got a feeling. Just got a feeling Marseille going to do it. Um. And plus a half means win or draw to Marseille and I win, so 1.80 looks great on for me. That'd be good stuff. Right then, Dan, where can we find you on the internet? Swipe right on Tinder. Whee! Hey, um, Proceed Dan, all one word on Twitter. <laughs> Proceed Dan, um, all one word on Facebook. Find me. Um, yeah, I'm lurking around in the, uh, Proceed the Facebook group too. So come have a chat with me, insult my tips. Um, send kinky photos, as Paddy already said. Yes, please. Um, Christmas <laughs> is around the corner. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, Johnny, where are you on the internet? Yeah, I'm on Twitter, Products of Johnny, uh, but more often on Facebook, Products of Johnny. I'm also in the group, um, so you can chat to me there. Cool. Yeah. And Martin? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter, protips.en, when it's working, it's not working at the moment, um, and protips.m on Twitter or on Facebook, protips to Martin. Great stuff, and you can find us all on uh, protips.uk on Facebook, and you can get me on Twitter, protipster, 
IRL. So look, thanks everyone for listening. You can subscribe to the Pro Tips of Football Show on iTunes or on Android Podcatchers. We're on uh, YouTube and the Pro Tipster blog as well. So make sure you give us a like, a subscribe, a thumbs up or whatever it is. Make sure kinky photos, kinky photos, kinky photos. Uh, <laughs> take a pro tips about com for some amazing football tips and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily tips videos, previews, strategies and of course these awesome podcasts as well. Alright, that's it from us. Enjoy the football. Look. Thanks for listening everybody. Don't forget to check out protipster.com where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipster Global. Or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipster E-N or ProTipster I-R-L. Bye.